not about the music, about the songs. Let your name be lifted high, Jesus. Let your name be honored, God. And we commit all that we are to you, God, and everything that we do. And we reach towards you.
going to do our greeting this morning, not only around the world on Ustream.tv and on Crusade Radio, but right here in beautiful downtown Buena Park. They refer to this area as the center of the Southland. We are in Southern California. That's why I have a Southern accent. <laughs> but anyway, we do welcome you on Crusade Radio. We do welcome you on Ustream.tv. Now, do your part of the welcome and turn to at least one or two people. Give them a greeting, a handshake, a hug, whatever is your uh, comfort zone. And uh, please uh, welcome them. Greet them. Not grope them, but greet them. <laughs> Amen. Good morning, everybody. And uh, as soon as you finish your greeting, would you please make your way back to your seat area and join me as we join more than a million and a half people uh, that are committed to the call to fall. If you're listening for the first time and you're interested in the call to fall, you can find it by going online at the words C-A-L-L, -L, the number 2, and F-A-L-L, call twofall.com, and you'll find more information about it. You'll see this as well as other information, your own state, and so forth. And I'm proud to say California is still in the lead with the most churches and the most people committed to the call to fall. So would you repeat after me this call to fall prayer? I will answer God's call to fall on my knees in humility. And seek his face in repentance so that he might forgive my sins and heal our land. Amen and amen. All right, if you'd uh, get in your seats again, and I would ask you uh, to allow me the privilege to continue in the mode of prayer here just for a moment. With all of you, I'm sure you've already been praying. All of you know uh, someone or know someone that knows someone that's back in the states that have been so devastated uh, by the flood and, and fires and everything. The death rate keeps going up. I heard on the radio today there was one more. They said we thought we had reached them all, but they finally found another body. So we do want to pray for them and uh, lift them up in prayer and pray that God's mercy will continue to uh, grow on them and with them. I also want to share a very personal prayer request here locally, and that is for Brenda. Brenda Darty is our cook, our food coordinator, and uh, co-host of my show sometimes, and does a lot of work around here. As many of you know, Brenda has been having some health issues recently in reference to her breathing. She has had to have breathing treatments and so forth. She seems to have gotten uh, through most of that, but uh, there's a lot of colds going around, and she is really in bad shape, bless her heart. I heard her coughing before I ever got to the kitchen this morning. I said, stay away from me. <laughs> but seriously, she is very sick. Uh, she has trouble breathing anyway, and when she gets cold, it's even worse. And so she came to me a while ago and said, please allow me to skip church. She didn't do it just because she was sick. She asked for permission. And I respect that in her and respect her faithfulness in all that she does. And I said very quickly, yes, go to bed, get out of here <laughs> and go to bed. And so you pray for her, pray for Brenda, and let's pray for all of the folks that uh, are going through struggling times now, not only those because of the flood and the fires and the deaths, but just our in general. I want to ask Brother Ronnie Cruz, if he would, to stand and lead us in a prayer for healing as well as for salvation.
Amen. Thank you so much. It is our privilege now to worship the Lord, for he is worthy to be worshipped. Mrs. Drake is going to the piano, and Brother Paul's coming to the platform. Uh, they are our leaders, and we want to follow them. And just remember, uh, if I see you sitting out there and your lips aren't moving, I might come to you with a microphone and ask you to do a solo. Now, if you would like to be in the choir, make your way up here with the other choir members. And by the way, we have just a few seats left, and we want you to come and be a part of the choir. And we thank the Lord for these that come faithfully and be a part of it, and we would encourage you to do the same thing. Let us now get our hymn books and turn to 252. Glory be to the Father. And that's exactly what we want to do today. We want to look to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. And we want to look to him at this time, not only for our nation and not only for the troubles around the world, but for the good things that are happening. The babies are being born, people getting married, people starting businesses, all the good stuff. And we pray for them as well. And let us, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent that happens, let us indeed say glory be to the Father. Brother Paul, lead us, please. I'm going to ask you to stand this morning as we do this. Uh, yes, we've had an invocation, but we're going to sing one. We're going to sing an invocation of praise. Amen. Glory be to the Father. Oh, hallelujah. The three in one. He is our Redeemer. He is our Victor. He is our Conqueror. And He is our Leader. Let's sing it in worship to Him today. Note, please. Glory, glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning it now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Oh, sing it one more time. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, it now and evermore be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Go back in your hymn book to page 334, please. We are going to praise the Lord this morning. Amen. And as I told Pastor, as we come into one of the most important weeks and seasons of our entire nation's history, we are going to sing about our country as well. Because I want you to walk out of the church of God today inspired to live for Jesus Christ, to vote your values, to participate in our nation, because that is your God-given responsibility. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's sing it together. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, 
purchased of God, born of the Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, oh, all is at rest. I, if I am in my Savior, and you can be that this morning just with your commitment to living for Him, I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching, are you watching? Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. Oh, I was going to skip it and sing the chorus. No, we're just going to sing it. Let's sing it together. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Amen. Going to sing My Country Tis of Thee in just a moment, but before we do, I want to just remind myself and you that as we sing these words, uh, they're really our words, but they're inspired by the Holy Spirit of God to the songwriters and the music. And I want to remind you that as we look back over what is going on in the East and all over the world, literally. What a blessed assurance some of those folks have because they knew Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior. We don't know who did or who did not, but we know this. There'll be some folks walking in heaven that came to know Jesus maybe just days or hours before their death there in those floods. And so we do want to say blessed assurance. And I'm glad I've got my assurance. We hear a lot on the radio and the television talking about insurance, that uh, they were trying to look at this one place where many homes were burned, they were flooded and then burned, you know, and insurance companies are trying to figure out what to do. One of the things I noticed on the secular media, though, was is that they sort of surprisingly and maybe almost condescending said, the insurance companies still call these circumstances an act of God, an act of God. Would be to God, we'd understand God's still on his throne. Would be to God, my friend, who's been in a wheelchair for 35 years. 35 years ago, he went out one night and got drunk, ran off of a mountain in Virginia, and broke his neck. Promise God that night, if you'll let me live, Lord, I'll serve you. 
That was 35 years ago. He's been confined to a wheelchair, but he still serves God. I say that to simply say, Brother Tony Wright there in Virginia, when we talk about these things, when we talked about Katrina, when we talked about the California fires and the mudslides, and Tony said, I'm sick and tired of hearing people say it's all because of Mother Nature. And he said, it ain't Mother Nature. Amen. It's Father God. Hallelujah. It's Father God. And let us indeed know that we have the assurance. I hope you have the assurance. We don't know when the big earthquake's going to come. We don't know what's going to happen. I shared an email this morning with some folk that in a few days, I'm going to be the ripe old age of 69 years of age. That's getting awful close to 70. <laughs> but uh, I'm healthy, and I'm happy in the Lord, and I praise God, and I'm that away. Not because I'm a good guy or anything, but simply because I have my assurance. Oh, yes, I have an insurance policy. Not a very big one, but I do have an insurance policy. But most importantly, I have an assurance policy. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. We're going to talk about that today, that foretaste of that glory. We're going to sing. And I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not discouraged. I have people call me out, well, Pastor, what's going to happen here? Well, we don't know what. I, I have no idea. What are you asking me for? <laughs> I don't know. I don't care. I know what. It, I do know this, though. I read the book. I read the last chapter, and it says we win. I don't know who wins on Tuesday, but I do know who wins in the end. We do. God does, and his people. And I'm not worried about Obama. Don't like him, but I ain't worried about him. I'm not worried about Romney. Don't agree with his stupid religion. But I'm not worried about him. Whether he wins or Obama wins, I'm not worried about it. Because I know what? God's still on his throne. Hallelujah. My God, in my blessed assurance, said, I'll not put you through anything. I won't give you the strength to stand. And I'll not put you through anything that I won't be there with you. I don't know what we're all going to have to go through in light of the political structure that we have or may have or whatever. But I know this. It's me and God. Brother, it's God and me. I told a guy, I met him one time. He, he wrote a country western song. said, me and Jesus got our own thing going. And it was sort of a cute song. It talked about serving the Lord and so forth. And he asked me, he said, you're a preacher. What do you think about my new song? I said, I like it. But, <laughs> he said, I figured it'd be a but there somewhere. I said, but, you need to change the words. It ain't me and Jesus. It's Jesus and me. He said, well, I thought about that, but it didn't work right in the song. <laughs> and I said, well, as long as you know it ain't me and Jesus, it's Jesus and me. That's the most important part. Let's worship the Lord and let's thank God for our country as we sing about it. Brother Bob, uh, Brother Paul, excuse me. Well, you turn to page 634, 634. I want to encourage you, pastor and congregation and Radio Land. I shared a banquet table with a lady last night. This lady is, I've known her for many, many years, and uh, she is deaf, 99%. And uh, she signs, but she speaks so very clearly. I asked her, I said, when did you lose your hearing? And she said, when I gave birth to my now 21-year-old daughter, something happened and she lost her hearing. She was... Uh, but at that time she was in a wheelchair and she went to a deaf convention and the pastor that was preaching at the close of the service, they had a prayer line and asked people, I, the first day I walked into this sanctuary, I walked by this communion table and I looked and I saw this bottle there and I said, pastor, this, that looks like an, a bottle for anointing oil. He said, that's what it is. 
He's been accused of all kinds of things, being Baptocostal and a few other things because of that. But he takes God at his word. And when God says, if you ask, if you pray in my name, if you seek my face, I will do, I will act. And long story short, this pastor, after he'd prayed for a number of people, walked over to this lady sitting in a wheelchair. He said, sister, give me your hand. She, now, she, she wasn't feeling good. She, was, she wanted something done, but uh, he said, give me your hand. And she, okay. She, she had argued with herself about being rolled up there to be prayed for something respiratory or something else. And so she took her hand and put it in his, and he said, get up and walk. She said, what? He said, get up and walk. She stood up, her legs felt like jello and wiggled a little bit, and then all of a sudden they were full of strength and she walked. She didn't tell me she danced, but if I'd have been in her shoes, I probably would have. I'd have done something nuts, but she walked and she has never been in the wheelchair since. God is still on the throne. He can take care of America, he can take care of the world. He can take care of all the radicalism that's going on and the junk that some people are trying to do. So I will stop that statement right there and say, let's sing. My country, tis of thee. Sweet land of liberty. Hallelujah. We have liberty in Jesus Christ our Lord because he has set us free from the bonds of sin and death. Amen? Amen. Amen. My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountainside. Let freedom ring. My native country, thee, land of the noble free, my na- thy name I love. I love thy rocks and rills, thy woods and templed hills. My heart with rapture fills like that above. Let's go to the fourth verse, please. Our fathers, God to thee, author of liberty, to thee we sing. Long may our land be bright with freedom's holy light. Protect us by thy might, great God, our King. Amen. All right, now, Paul, uh, I'm going to go ahead and dismiss the choir, yes. but Paul's going to share. A song that I hope you'll listen to, not necessarily just to him, but you'll listen to the words of the song, and you'll let these words be your words back to Almighty God. And whatever we face in the days ahead, we need to pray, but we need to understand, this is my country, and I'm going to pray. Some people say you're always talking about you don't like Obama, this kind of thing. And a guy asked me that this week, and, I, and he asked me, why don't I pray for Obama? I said, I do, Amen. every day, Amen. every day. And I asked him, I said, do you pray for him every day? Well, I, I try to pray for him quite often. I said, then don't criticize me. I disagree with him, but I pray for him every day. You know why? Because the book says I'm supposed to. I don't like it, but I do it because the book says do it. This is our country. This is my country. I want it back, and I'm going to get it back. We're going to get it back. One way or the other, we'll get it back. God will give it back. This is my country. Let us listen as we hear Brother Paul share this song with us. What? 
What difference if I hail from north or south or from the east or west? My heart is filled with love for all of these. I only know I swell with pride for deep within my breast. I thrill to see, oh glory, paint the breeze. This is my country, land of my birth. This is my country, grandest on earth I pledge thee my allegiance America the pole for this is my country to have and to hold with hand upon my heart, I thank the Lord for this, my native land. For all the love is here within her gates. My soul is rooted deeply in the soil on which I stand. For these are mine, my own United States. If you know it, sing it with me. This is my country, land of my choice. This is my country. This is my, hear my proud voice. Hear my proud voice, I pledge thee my allegiance, America the bold, for this is my country to have and to hold. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. God bless you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is my country. I am proud to be an American. Amen. And I want you to be as well. And I want to remind you of some announcements. On Monday the 12th, coming pretty quickly, we will be here all day. That's Monday. We'll start about 9 o'clock. We're going to have some other singers and some people coming. And, and uh, we're going to be celebrating and we're going to be uh, honoring. How many veterans do we have? Would you stand, please? Stand up, veteran, if you're a military veteran. One, two, three. Anybody else? Thank you. You may be seated. That day will be the Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C.'s second annual honoring of our veterans. Last year we did it at Knott's Bear Farm at the um, Independence Hall. And if you're a veteran, anytime during the month of November, you just simply go to the front gate with your proof. Those of you that are in the military know probably your DD-214, your paperwork, something that shows you were in the military, and that's a ticket to Knott's Bear Farm. Amen. You can get in anytime during the month and they'll honor you by allowing you to come in, and you can take one guest with you as well, as well as they've agreed to allow you to purchase up to six discount tickets. Now, you'll have to work with them on that. I don't know how much the discount is, uh, but it's considerable, very reasonable, uh, but it's for you and one guest free, and that's during the month of November, and I would encourage you to take advantage of that. Go to Knott's Bear Farm and enjoy Knott's Bear Farm as a benefit of serving our nation. And to those of you who have served, thank you for your service.
For those of you that went overseas, welcome back. For those of you that worked and stayed by the stuff, the Bible makes it very clear. We honor men who go off to war and women who go off to war and who are wounded. There's all kinds of honors. But the bottom line is all veterans are to be honored. That's what the book teaches, the Bible says. There was a disagreement in the war. David had sent all the troops out. They had come back from battle, and the way they paid them in those days, you think you don't get paid now much in the military, the way they paid them in those days is whatever they took from the enemy, they got to keep. <laughs> and that was their pay. And uh, David, from time to time, would take that up and sort it and give it to the soldiers. And one of the soldiers complained, and he said, Look, I'm out there with a sword in one hand and a spear in the other. I'm on the middle of the blood and guts. I think I ought to be paid more than the person who is just back here staying by the stuff. David said, no. The fact that that person is staying by the stuff means you can stay alive longer out there in the field. So the people who stay by the stuff get paid as much as those who literally go down in battle. And that's the way it ought to be. And I like that analogy because Jesus says we're at war. We're soldiers of the cross, and we are at war. Some of us are out there in the battlefield. Some of us don't get to go to the battlefield as often as we would like. I was invited to a battlefield just today, and I said, I can't come. I got, I got too many other things going. Can't be at every battle. And I'm sorry I won't be there. But I said, I'll stay by the stuff. Tell me when you're going to be there, and I'll pray. Tell me how long you're going to be there, and I'll pray through. We are praying through on several avenues and several fronts. And I coined that other little phrase, boots on the ground are prayer in the air. I can't be boots on the ground every time I want to be, but I can always be prayer in the air. Amen? I can always be air support. This week we were going through some more stuff at the house. And I came across a book that my wife had ordered for me before she passed away. And it was about aircraft carriers. And, of course, I served on a carrier, and it has a CD in it. And uh, Brother Jaime is also likes Navy and aircraft carriers. And so I passed that along to him. But I told him I'm sort of an Indian giver. I want to give it to you, but I want to get it back. Not totally, but he's going to be working. There's a DVD there with some beautiful pictures of some of our beautiful American aircraft carriers. I'm hoping the Kitty Hawk is on there, but if it's not, there'll be one that'll look just like the Kitty Hawk. And so we'll be seeing some of that. Jaime will be working that in some of our previews. I want to remind all of you listening and watching that we're not doing just a one-hour show now every day, Monday through Friday at 9 and 5. We do two-hour shows. The first hour is all presentation, inspiration, illustrations from the Word of God and from our military and from a lot of things. That's for the first hour. And then I come on live and do one-hour live show as well. And uh, we praise the Lord for that. And we would encourage you. Now, if you have your Bibles, the Bible says we're at war. The weapon of their warfare was a sword. In fact, Jesus, sometimes somebody says, what do you think about second right amendment? What do you think about the right to possess and own weapons? I said, well, it's in the book. It's in the Bible. They didn't have 357 magnums and 9 millimeters and those kind of things in those days. But they did have swords. And Jesus not a disciple, but Jesus said to the disciples, do you have a weapon? And they said, no, Lord. They had probably been listening to TV or radio that said Christians ought not be armed. <laughs> but they said, no, Lord, we don't have a sword. We don't have a weapon. And Jesus said, then here I'll tell you what. Most of you have a coat and a cloak. The coat's absolutely necessary. The cloak is only necessary when it really gets cold. And he said, if you don't have a sword to defend yourself 
and for battle, I suggest you sell your cloak and get the money for it and then go buy you a sword. Jesus said disciples ought to be armed. And I'm here to tell you today, you ought to be armed. not talking about a gun or whatever, but I'm talking about as a soldier of the cross, you need to be armed. This is our weapon of choice, a holy Bible. And I want to say something to you. If you do not have one, Joe, would you please stand up? Turn around and face the audience. If you will get to him, with him, he will get you a Bible. He will get you a Bible. We have Bibles around here. You see Joe. We're going to make Joe the Bible man. So if you don't have a Bible, you see Joe and say, I want a Bible. And get a Bible from him. How many of you have your Bible with you in church? All right, several of you. Thank you. God bless you. The rest of you are going to be embarrassed next week when I ask you again. Because I'm giving you a warning. I want to ask you, you need to have a sword. I ought not go to battle without a sword. Next week I'm going to ask you, do you have a Bible? Raise your Bible. And some of you are going to be embarrassed because you're going to forget. Well, see Joe and he'll help you get a Bible. So get a Bible from Brother Joe, the Bible man, and have a sword when you come to church. You ought not come to church without a sword. How many of you have ever turned around and went back home to get your wristwatch? Anybody? Well, you feel like you need your watch. I've made several round trips to go back and get my cell phone. <laughs> Need that cell phone. Need that wristwatch. You need the Bible. Don't come to church without it, all right? Now, one other thing in reference to the Bible, I want to ask you to honor the Bible because it is God's Word by standing, please, as we read the Word of God from a very familiar portion of Scripture. Probably one of the most reproduced parts of the Bible in the history of the Bible, and that is the book of John. Many people reproduce this whole book and put it in one book form, the book of John, because it is such a pregnant book. Pregnant, when you see a pregnant woman, I saw a woman on the street yesterday, and I thought, and she was walking, or waddling, <laughs> and I said, my goodness, lady, you need to get home. <laughs> she was very, pre I didn't say that to her, but I thought I could. Uh, she was very, very pregnant. And I was surprised that baby didn't get delivered while she was walking down the street. She was very, very pregnant. Well, this book, the book of John, is a very pregnant book. Anytime you open it from the first to the last verse, it is delivering something to you. Start at the very beginning, and you'll see what I mean. John chapter 1, verse 1 says this, in Genesis, no, it says in the beginning, in the beginning was the Word. Now, the Word is Jesus. The Word is the written Word. The, the Word is twofold, the living Word and the written Word. But it says in the beginning, from day one, was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and is God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him, not anything that was made was made. In Him was and is life the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Now, turn over with me to that very, again, famous portion of Scripture in chapter 3. Chapter 3, verse 16. Most of you could quote it. I can, but as soon as I say I do and don't have it in front of me, I'll mess it up. <laughs> John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son in the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned 
But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, and his deeds may be, may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you for honoring the reading of God's word. This is that very familiar John 3.16 portion, but I want us to revisit again. No matter how often we revisit the Bible, it's always fresh. And this particular verse is always even more fresh in my opinion. He says, whosoever, and that's you so ever, that's anybody, red and yellow, black and white, we sang in vacation Bible school, red and yellow, black and white, they're all precious in his sight. You see, whosoever, whosoever, God so loved the world, he didn't love part of the world, he loved the whole world. And that's exactly what that word means. It means the whole world, the darkest of Africa, the lightest of America, and everywhere in between. God loves the whole world. And he loved them, and this is the greatest love ever expressed. God so loved all of us that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. When we deal with death like we have recently, and when we hear of people dying, not knowing why or when or what happened, the question always comes, I hope they went to heaven. I hope they were ready. And I agree with that. That's the first thoughts I have. On the other hand, the old devil will tell you and I, well, yeah, but, you know, a loving God wouldn't send somebody to hell. God says, if you do not have the Son, you're already condemned. I didn't write that, folks. God did. God wrote that. God said, if you do not, uh, if you, for God loved the world uh, so much, he that believeth on him is not condemned. And that's good news. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Now, we must understand what that's talking about. And what that's talking about is simply this, that we are automatically already condemned if we have not come to Jesus. Now, some people don't like that. Some people that are agnostic and some people that don't believe uh, don't like that because they don't think that's fair. Well, who ever told you life is going to be fair? Only the world will tell you that because it's not fair. When I think of the great flood, God warned everybody. Nobody listened. Then the floods came. And there were people all around that ark when the floods came. There were boys and girls, men and women, every race, every age. And they all died because they would not listen to God. And it got eternally too late. I hope here today, in a few moments, we're going to celebrate the Lord's Supper by partaking of the elements of the Lord's Supper and celebrating the fact that Jesus Christ died for the whole world. But only those who have received Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior indeed have that eternal life. So I would ask you right now, bow your heads with me and close your eyes. If you're here today and you know that you have eternal life, 
That is, you know that you've acknowledged Jesus as God and you know that you've invited him to come into your heart and into your life. And if you do know that and you've done that already, then you can quietly and silently rejoice and say, thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so rich and free. But if you've never done that and you know You need to do it right now. You may be watching on television. You may be listening on the radio. You may be one of the 40 to 45 people here that hear my voice live. I want to give you an opportunity to do three things in your prayer. Number one, to acknowledge that Jesus is God. Number two, to acknowledge you cannot save yourself. And number three, to invite Jesus to come into your heart and into your life. Now, if you're here today watching on television, listening on the radio, or here in the congregation, and you would like to pray that prayer, I want you to indicate to God, yes, Lord, I'm going to pray that prayer. Would you just slip your hand up, please, and put it right back down. Slip your hand up and put it right back down. Thank you. If you were watching on television, I couldn't see your hand. doesn't matter. What matters is you raise your hand to God. Now, if you raise your hand listening on the radio or television or here in the sanctuary, I want you to pray a simple prayer. Use your own language. Use your own words, but something like this. You would say, I admit and I acknowledge that Jesus Christ is God and I acknowledge that I cannot save myself I can't be good enough I can't do enough to save myself and right now I ask Lord Jesus come into my heart and into my life and save me and make me your child Let me say to you again, whether listening on the internet or here in the pew, if you prayed that prayer, at that very moment you became born again. At that very moment, Jesus came in your heart and in your life. Based on his promise, whosoever will may come, and you're whosoever and you came. Father, we thank you for this day. We know, Lord, that you say in heaven there's a great exciting party going on because one person came to know you as Lord and Savior on this day. We don't know how many others, but we know this great celebration you said in heaven when one person comes to know Jesus as Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to ask our ushers to come. Take our offering for this morning, give you an opportunity to give to the ministry here at Southern Baptist Church. While they're doing that, I'm going to make a few announcements for you. Uh, Like I said, on the 12th, we're having our Honor the Veterans Day, so please come. Invite your friends to come. Anytime during the day, we'll be here. We'll be having great fellowship and fun, great food, and so we encourage you to come. Now, if if you have a friend, a family member, or someone that's a veteran, and you would like to honor them, you'd like to make sure that they get a Warrior's Medal of Valor, you just contact me, and we'll work with you on that, okay? You can give them... They don't have to be here. Somebody has to be here to receive it. So it could be for your loved one or your friend or whatever. uh, But you see me, we'll be glad to work that out for you. And uh, also we want to encourage you that uh, we continue to pray with us as as our ministry expands into the Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C., into the uh, telephonic prayer meeting that we have every day, and we praise the Lord for that. Praise God that he's going to continue. And the blue box up here is for the cross down in Branson. We're going to continue to to raise that money, continue to get that together so that we can help build that cross down in Branson. And so may the Lord bless you as you give. Now, I want to ask our ushers to come back, and we're going to do our Lord's Supper celebration.
Amen. All right, now take a little piece of bread and hold on to it. We're going to eat together in just a moment. So, so please, uh, please do that if you would. And uh, we'll, we'll continue to uh, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Let me bless his holy name. Get that out of the way. We'll eat the bread together here in just a moment. The bread is unleavened, which it has no salt or no leavening, no yeast. That is to keep with the symbolism of the Old Testament and the New Testament. The bread being the symbol of our Lord's body, which was perfect, which was destroyed, but it was the perfect body. And so we would not dare put any kind of seasoning or yeast or anything into it, even salt, because that would be a contaminant. And so we want the pure bread to represent his pure body. And the Apostle Paul said there in the scripture that before you partake of the bread and before you take of the juice of the vine, you must confess all of your sins and receive forgiveness. You can do that right where you're seated. You don't have to go to a high priest. You don't have to go to a pastor. You just go to your high priest, Jesus Christ, and say, Lord... I want to partake of this bread in a worthy, holy manner. None of us are worthy, but in a worthy manner that is to be cleansed from our sin. No one confess sins. And as the fellows serve everyone, hang on to your bread and we'll eat together as is the tradition of the scripture. to it and we'll drink together people always ask well why don't you use wine same reason we use unleavened bread alcohol is a drug alcohol is a contaminant and so to use an alcoholic wine is contrary to scripture people argue oh, well they drank wine they had wine at this you know at the wedding feast and so on. doesn't matter You could argue that all day long. Bottom line is, why would you use something contaminated to represent the pure blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? And so that's why we traditionally use pure grape juice to represent the pure blood of Jesus. When he said... Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. The blood that Jesus shed on the cross is represented by this little glass, by this little amount of grape juice. There's nothing magic about it. There's nothing holy about it except holy in what we do. If you have asked the Lord to forgive you of your sins, you stand in his righteousness, completely holy. Therefore, Paul said, you can partake of it in a worthy manner. Paul said there were some of them there that got sick. And some of them died because they were partaking of the Lord's Supper in an unworthy manner with sin in their life and doing the Lord's Supper in the wrong way. I may have all my 
drink the olive. You find a little place there to choose with your glass and you're finished. Want to ask us to do a hymn of invitation. After the Lord's Supper, the Bible said they sang a hymn and then went out. So, Brother, lead us in a, a 321? 312. 312 in the, in the hymn book. And would you, as you put your glass away, please stand. I'll be here at the front to meet with you, to pray with you. These steps are the altar of this church in the sanctuary of the Holy of Holies. If you have something you need to take, you don't have to, but sometimes it's just good to go to a special place. Maybe during this song, you'd come and kneel, take something personal, something special, just before the Lord. I'll be here to meet with you to pray with you. You don't have to come through me, but I'm here in case you need someone to talk to. Let us sing together, and you come if the Lord leads you. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. See on the portals, he's waiting and watching, watching for you and for me come home come home ye who are weary come home earnestly tenderly Jesus is calling, calling, oh sinner, come home. Let's call in to the straight. Thank you for our music. Let's call. Would you pronounce our benediction? Oh God, our help in ages past, our very present help in the time of trouble today. Lord, as we've heard your word again and challenged our hearts that there's only one way to come to you, Lord. We bring ourselves to you. We ask you to walk with each one of us this day. Go before us and let the Holy Spirit walk with us that he may use us for your glory and help us to bring and witness and share your love with someone else. Go with us this day in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you. Thank you.